Okay, your turn. Query 12. Get the supply numbers of Paris suppliers with status between 10 and 20 inclusive. Of course, I want you to use between and not, you know, less than equal or greater than equal. To. Okay, so again, pause the video. When you're ready, continue and look at the answer. So this is again the complete table of all the suppliers. And we want only Paris suppliers with status between 10 and 20. Okay, so this is a London supplier, not interested. That's a Paris supplier with status 10. Yes, it's between 10 and 20 because it's inclusive. So that supplier we want. This is a Paris supplier, but status is 30. No, London supplier, no. Athens supplier, no. Okay, so that's really what we want. And we want only the supplier number. So that's all you get. Okay, so I assume your SQL look like this. Select supplier number from suppliers where status between 10 and 20 and city equals Paris. Again, Paris within single quotes. Okay, so now we've done simple queries and we've done queries with uh, selecting all the fields, selecting some of the fields and conditions, simple conditions, complex conditions where we put multiple conditions and connect them with an AND. We didn't use OR, but we could have we did that, but so far we've looked at only one table and that's what we'll continue to do this week. We're not going beyond that. However, we are now moving to a qualitatively different kind of query. Till now, if you look back, you will find that for every query that we did, every result row came only from one parent row. Okay. In fact, it's worthwhile for us to just go back and, and look at all the queries we did. Okay, so that was the first query. We said all the details of all the suppliers. We expected this, right? And in fact, every result row came from a single parent row. In this case, of course, it's exactly the same table. And if we go to the next query, Okay, again, we got everything. Once again, you see that every single row of the output comes from a single row of the input. So once again, same thing in this query as well. Okay, so here again, you see supply name and status for all the suppliers. You've got all these output rows, but every single output row comes from one input row, not from multiple input rows. Same thing again here. I'm just going to blow through this. So once again, you see here, this row from output came from one single row of input. This row of output came from one single row of input. In other words, we looked at an input row from the parts table and we picked out only the columns we want. But for every row of the output, it came from a single input row. Once again here, in here in fact it becomes even more obvious that this row came from that row, this row came from this row, and this row came from this row. The other rows were simply rejected, right? So every single row of output came from a single input row. Same thing here as well. Same thing here again. Every single row of output came from a single input row. But of course, we may not have used all the fields of the input row, but still, whatever information is in the output row came from one input row. Okay, so that's been the case for all the queries that we have done so far. But now we're going to start moving towards a different kind of a query, where one output row is created by looking at multiple input rows. Okay, so this is just again, I'm going through all the queries we've done so far to show you that every output row came from a single input row.
Okay. So now we come to this query. How many suppliers are there overall? Okay. So this is again the complete supplier table. And we can see from here that there are five suppliers. So the output is going to be five suppliers. Now forget the count star for the time being. Okay. But the five was arrived at by looking at five input rows. Right. So it's an aggregate of five different input rows. So in that sense, this kind of a query is qualitatively different from the kind of queries that we have looked at so far. These are called queries that use aggregate functions or in short, yes, aggregate queries. Because they aggregate data from multiple rows and each row of the output might be obtained by looking at multiple rows of input. This single row of output was obtained by looking at five input rows. Okay, so what's the SQL to do this? Very simple. Select, count star. In other words, what I'm saying is, just count the number of rows in the supplier table. Okay, count star, right? That is, we are not interested in counting a particular column. It doesn't matter which column we count. We're just saying, just count it. Count what? Count from suppliers. That is, in other words, what we are saying is, select star from suppliers, but count the number of rows that you get. Don't show me all the details that you select. Do the selection, then just show me the count of how many rows you got. So that's what this did. This retrieved, presumably, all the rows from the supplier table, counted them up, and simply returned the five back to us. Okay. So count here is an aggregate function. That is, it's a function that aggregates information from multiple rows and produces a result which will be displayed. Okay, so that's what it is. This is an aggregate function. So calcul it calculates values based on elements from several rows, possibly. Okay, count star is simply saying, just count the number of rows that were returned. Okay, so it's like doing select star from suppliers and then counting the results. Okay, so that's an example of the use of an aggregate function. Okay, now, uh, as you saw here, when you, if you run this query in an SQL system, as you will do later on, you'll see the output looking like this. It'll say count star and then five. Now that doesn't look very nice. You would probably want this to say number of suppliers. Okay, or at least supplier count or something like that. Some meaningful kind of a column heading. Okay, so you can get that by doing it like this. You can say select count star and then you can put an as clause. So that is select count star and call it as supplier count. Okay, so then you will see the result as shown here. The column will not be called count star anymore. It will be called supplier count, which is a little more meaningful. So you can always use this as clause to do this. Okay, so that's the idea. So you put the column name that you want. This is in fact applicable not just to count star. It is applicable to any column. For example, you might say select SNO, SNO, that's the name of the column from supplier. Well, then the result is going to say SNO and then all the numbers. Well, you might want the result to not just say SNO, but supplier number in full. So you could say select SNO as supplier number from blah, 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 from suppliers. Okay. Now notice the double quotes around supplier count. You need to have double quotes here because there's a space in supplier count. If there were no space, then you actually didn't need the double quotes. Okay. So anytime when you've got spaces in the uh, what follows the as, then you should put double quotes. Otherwise, SQL will cough. It won't understand what you're trying to say because it'll think select count star as supplier. And then it'll think of this as the next thing in the query. And it's completely confused. You're trying to say something. You don't have a comma. What's going on here? Okay. That's what it'll get confused about. Okay, so that's the use of the as clause. Okay, and as uh, shown here, you use it after the column name, but before putting a comma. If you had another field, you put the comma after this, and then you will continue. Okay, so how many parts are there overall? Your turn, pause the video, and get the result. It should be pretty straightforward. This is the original table, and you're going to get six parts, because that's what the, that's the number of parts there are. So you would say again, select count star from parts. That's it.
Okay, select count start from parts. That's going to be the answer. Okay, now we will get a little bit more fancy. What we're saying is, give me the city names and the number of suppliers in each city. Okay, remember, for every supplier, we've got a city. We've got London, Paris, Athens, etc. Now, what we're saying is, list all the cities. And for every city, just tell me how many suppliers there are in the city. I don't want the names of all those suppliers. Just London, three or whatever the, it's there in London. Paris, whatever the number there is in Paris. Athens, whatever the number there is in Athens. That's what we want. Okay. So once again, this is our complete table of suppliers. So you can see there are two from London, two from Paris, one from Athens. That's what we want. We want London two, Paris two, Athens one. That, this is the output we are looking at. Okay. So once again, you can see here that this output row is a summary of these two rows which have London. This Paris again is a summary of these two rows and Athens is in some sense a summary of this one single row. If there were more Athens, it would have got, they would have also got added up, but there's only one. Okay. This is what we're looking for. Okay. This is a modified or a little more complicated version of what we saw in the previous query. How would you achieve this? You will say select. And of course, we want the city and we also want the count of how many suppliers are in that city. So you will again say from suppliers. But this time we're going to say earlier when we said count star, we didn't give any condition. So it counted everything that was returned. But what we are now saying is, hold on a bit. Before you do that, group the results by the city and give me the count for every city. Okay. Don't just give me one total count. I want you to count it for every city. That is, I want you to group the results by city and then total up the count for every city. Okay, so this is different. And in order to do this, you use the group by class. Right? Now you say group it by city. If you, if you omitted the group by, then of course this query would be wrong. Uh, it would effectively mean saying select count start from suppliers, which is just how many suppliers are there. But we don't want that. We want for every city, how many suppliers are there. Okay, so we want to select the city and the count star from suppliers, but we now want to group the results by city. That is what the grouping is what causing all the cities to be listed here. And the count star is what is causing the count of every city to be listed here. Okay, that's what's going on in this particular query. It's very important for you to visualize the query, especially in these kinds of situations. You have to visualize the query and then start writing it out. Okay. Uh, when you have these kinds of situations, it's absolutely uh, essential that you first think in your mind or write down on a piece of paper, what's the output going to sort of look like? You, you may not get the actual output because the, the tables might be very big, but you want to get an idea of this is what it's going to look like approximately. Then you can cons construct the query. Okay. So with a group by clause, the aggregate function applies to each of the groups. That is, you, you create one group for each city. That's what the group by means. And then for every group, the aggregate function that you specify in the select applies. It applies to each group individually. If you have an aggregate function, you don't have a group, then the aggregate function applies to the entire table. That's what we're seeing here. This is very important for you to, to understand. You must understand a very crucial point about the group by class. Okay, let's consider the same query once again. City names and number of suppliers in each city. Okay, so we've got our cities and we saw this result already, the number of suppliers in each city. Okay, and the query was like this. Select city count star from suppliers group by city. Okay, now the point about this is that when you've got an aggregate function, and a non-aggregate field in the select class. Okay, just think about what we are doing here. We are saying, well, create one group for each city and then count up the elements for the group. Okay, so if you do this, clearly you must be trying to do the grouping, right? Without a group by, mixing an aggregate and a non-aggregate makes no sense whatsoever. Right? Because when you mix an aggregate and a non-aggregate, we are really saying you're going to be creating groupings 
by the non-aggregate and then you're going to apply the aggregate to each group. Now, having said that, if you don't include a group by class with that particular field, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, this is very important. With a group by class, the fields mentioned in the group by must also appear in the select class. That is conversely, if you just say select count star from suppliers group by city, that also doesn't make any sense, right? Because you're saying you're creating groups and what's the point of creating groups if you don't print the group names? Okay, so that's the whole point. So if you have just aggregates in your select class, then you should not have group bytes. If you have only aggregates, no non-aggregate fields, then you should not have a group by. If you have a mixture of non-aggregates and aggregates, then you should have a group by. Okay. And of course, if you have no aggregates, then you should not have any group by. Now, this will come when you work a little bit and start thinking a little more deeply about what is going on here. Okay. Once you visualize the output, then you'll have no problem with this. You'll run into problems if you don't visualize the output. Right. So if you visualize the output, you're saying, show me the city and the number of suppliers. So clearly, city is going to have to appear in the select class because the select class uh, you know, whatever columns you see in the result must appear in the select. So those two must appear. And you're mixing an aggregate and a non-aggregate. That can make sense only if you have a group by. Therefore, group by should also appear here. Okay, so that's very important about group by. Okay, uh, so if you take this SQL query, what output would you expect from this SQL query? It says select supplier number count star from suppliers. Okay, so you're saying you've got an aggregate and a non-aggregate in the select class. Okay, which means somehow you're trying to say, well, I want the count of every supplier number from suppliers. Right. The, but this doesn't make sense because you're saying create a group with this and count the number for every item of the group, but you've not specified a group by. So this query is wrong. Even, you know, you might execute it in SQL and MySQL and see some result, but it's still wrong. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. So no, look at it. How we say we've got five suppliers. We've got only one value for count star. We have not done a group, right? And since we have done, not done a group by, the aggregate applies to the entire table and there's only one value. So there's a mismatch. Because after all, when you say select, you're, you're outputting a table. And therefore, you've got to have the same number of every column that you mention in the select. But if you've got five supply numbers and just one count star, then it doesn't make any sense. right? So therefore, when you mix an aggregate and a non-aggregate, you must have a group by. Okay? As it is, this query makes no sense whatsoever. Okay? Without a group by, we cannot mix aggregates and non-aggregates in the select class. If you think about it, if you try to visualize the result, then you'll understand why this is the case. Okay, With the group by, all the fields mentioned in the group by clause must appear in the select class. Okay, So your turn, give me the city names and the number of projects in each city. So, okay, pause the video, do it, and then proceed. So obviously, it's going to be select city count star from projects group by city. Next one, select the city names and the average status of suppliers from each city. Okay, so that's our main table of suppliers. So we want the average status for every supplier, for, for suppliers from a given city. Okay, so you've got two suppliers from London. Both of them have a status of 20, so the average status is 20. Two suppliers from Paris, one is 10, one is 30. Uh, so the total is 40, average is 20, so that's it. Only one supplier from Athens, status is 30, so average is 30. This is what we're looking for, okay? So this is also like count, except that now we want to get the average. So it's very simple how to do this. You can just do 
select city, but this time we want to say average status, AVG status as average status because we don't want AVG status, you know, average of within parentheses status, we might want it to display. So we are using the as clause to do this. Once again, since we've got, uh, since we want it to be grouped by city, that is for every city we wanted to calculate the average, we say group by city. Now in the previous slide, we saw that the city names were not listed in any particular order. As I've already said, in SQL, unless you specify the order, the results can come out in any order whatsoever. If you want it to be ordered, then you have to explicitly specify the ordering. So in this case, I've just taken the same old query as before, select city average status as AVG status from suppliers, group by city, order by city. Okay, so in this case, we're going to get the results not ordered as London, Paris, Athens, but as Athens, London, Paris. That's what is going to be the result for this because we have said do everything, but after you finish doing everything, please order the results by the column whose name is city. And of course, we have not specified the type of ordering. So by default, it's going to do ascending order. Okay, show me the city names and the number of projects in each city. Again, I have not specified any order. And this is your turn. Pause the video, answer the question, then proceed. Okay, so this is all the projects. And we can see from this that there's one project in Paris, which is this one. There's one in Rome, two in Athens, two in London, one in Oslo. So we expect the results like this. Again, we have not said any ordering, so it's going to come out in any random order. So again, I'm pretty sure you wrote this query. Select city, count star as number of projects, which is optional. You need not have said as, because I haven't asked for it, from projects group by city, because we want to create one group for each city. So that's 18. Okay, 19. We want the part color and the average weight of parts of that color. Again, use uh, your turn, pause the video, continue. And of course, we already know that to calculate the average, we can use the AVG function. Okay, so this is it. So if you consider London, for example, there's a 12 and a 19 and a 14. So 12 plus 14, 26 plus 19, 45 divided by three, that's 15 for London. For Paris, there are two parts, 17 and 12, uh, which is 29, so it's going to be 14.5. For Rome, it's just 17. So that's going to be our answer. Okay. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. We are talking about parts of color, not city. So red, you've got 12, 14, 26, plus 19, 45. So it's going to be 15. Uh, for green, it's going to be 17 because there's only one. For blue, it's going to be 17 plus 12, 29, 14.5. Okay, so that's the same thing. How do you get it? Select color, average weight from parts grouped by color. Fairly straightforward. Okay, now get the maximum and minimum weight in the parts table. That's what we want. That is, we want to look at the parts table, find out the maximum weight and the minimum weight. This query is a little bit different because it's got two aggregate functions. We want to find the maximum and the minimum, right? So uh, the result is going to look like this, but this 19 is derived by looking at all the rows this 12 is also derived by looking at all the rows. Okay, so it's got two aggregates. That's perfectly possible. Most of the time when you have more than one aggregate on this, you know, coming together, your result will probably have just a single row. Okay, select maximum weight as max weight, min, minimum weight as min weight from parts. That's it. Okay, so show me the city names and the average status of suppliers from each city. This is fairly straightforward. I think we did this before. But we are saying list only those cities with an average status greater than 20. That's all the cities. I mean, all the suppliers. This is for every city, what is the average status? So for example, London, there are two suppliers with 20. So the average is 20. Paris, 
two suppliers, one is 10, one is 30. So the average again is 20. Athens, one supplier, stat is 30. Okay. But that's not the result we are looking at. We are saying, okay, produce this. Then show me only cities with an average status greater than 20. London has 20, so it's out. Paris has 20, so it's out. Athens has 30. So that's the only one which is going to come out. Okay. So this is the final result that we are looking for. So in this case, what we are doing is we've got an aggregate function. We've, we've got a group by London, by city. But we are saying select only some of the groups for display. Okay. This is different from a where condition. In the where condition, what we are saying is filter out the rows from the original tables by applying the condition specified. Here we are not filtering from the original table. We are filtering from the groups. Okay, that's qualitatively different. So this is how you do it. You say select city average status as AVG status from suppliers group by city and up to that point is what produces this. But then we are saying show me only those groups that have status greater than 20. So you use the having clause. Okay. So having clause is sort of like a where clause, but for groups. Normally, when you put a where clause, you're saying filter the rows, the original table rows by this. But now we are saying, I want to apply a condition to the groups. So you cannot use the same word where, because then the SQL processor will get confused. So to tell the SQL processor, I want you to filter from the groups that you've created, you say having. Okay, so that's, that's, that's important to understand how having works. Okay, you use having to filter among the groups. Pay very good attention to the difference between the where clause and the having clause. Your turn. Should get the part color and average weight of parts having that color. List only the parts with average weight below 17. Pause the video, get your answer, then compare it with what I have to say. That's all the parts. That is the grouped parts by color. But we want to list only those which have an average weight below 17. And therefore, we would list only the red row and the blue row. And forget about the green row because that is 17. It's not below 17. Okay. So the result is going to be this. And this is how we want. Select color. Average weight from parts, group by city, group by color, not city. Group by color. And having average weight less than 17. That is, first create this. Up to this line creates the group. Then we say from the groups, show me only those groups which satisfy this condition, which is having average weight less than 17. That is average weight less than 17. So this goes, only these two remain. That's what you're seeing here. 